About a year ago, I uploaded a review of the Two Terrain Outback Explorer onto this channel, right after Mexico, which you may have seen. And ever since, it's been another year with rides in Kyrgyzstan, my participation in the Silk Road Mountain Race, as well as numerous rides in Spain, uh, which are all visible on this channel as well. And so, it's now been two years with the Two Terrain Outback. And I wanted to take the opportunity while I'm here with Belen in this beautiful natural park in eastern Spain to um, go over this bike and give you another review of the two-year variant. In my opinion, this bicycle is the perfect exploring rig for anything bikepacking. And it's specced with 29-inch wheels, with, which fit just fine with 2.35-inch tires, as well as uh, a swooping handlebar, a nice stiff fork, in my case I don't mind having no suspension, a titanium tubus rack, a Brooks C17 saddle, a Pinion C112 gearbox and also a Gates belt, and Ortlieb's new lineup of dark sand bike picking bags. So in this video I want to take you over every part that I've specced this bike with, tell you how they've been keeping up or if they're newly added, and uh, give you an impression of what this bike can do. And I want to start with the front of the bike because usually it's perceived as uh, the most impressive front end thanks to this fork, this gargantuan size that allows for pretty much any tire uh, width to go into it. As an example, I've had 27.5 inch rims on this with a 2.8 inch tire, uh, the same Hans Dampf from Schwalbe. And this is a 29 with a 2.35 inch tire from Schwabe as well, the Hans Dampf. And both of them fit just fine. As you can see, the tires are nice and burly. I really like this tire. I've come to like it very much over the, these two years of riding because it's, uh, it just keeps up forever. Um, it allows you to go on really nasty terrain. Uh, it also allows you to ride on asphalt just fine. It can be uh, put on in both directions, which is really nice. You don't have to think about the orientation. And of course it can be made tubeless, so I ride with it tubeless. Uh, the rim currently is the WTB 29 inch uh, rim that Two Terrain specs this Outback with. It has had a little modification in the form of a SON28 Dynamo hub, which puts uh, electricity while I'm riding out to a USB-C socket on the top of my head tube, which uh, I can then used to charge a external battery pack with. Uh, in the Adventure Fork, this is the Adventure Fork 1, there is no room to put the Sync Plug 6, which is a circular head tube battery because of the construction of this carbon fork. But in the second generation Adventure Fork, which Two Terrain specs their Outbacks with nowadays, there's a, a little bit less space. It's a little bit less swoopy in the design, but still enough for your tire choices. And it allows you to put this circular battery into your head tube so that you don't have to charge an external battery. That's quite handy. I, I might uh, transfer to that at some point, but so far I'm very happy with this kit and with the fork. The carbon has kept up just fine. And also, as you can see, it has mounting points so I can put my fork bags on. Uh, generally, I'm very happy with what the front end is looking like right now. The main advantage of the Outback over a lot of the other bike picking bikes available is that it comes with this system, the pinion gearbox, the C112 in my case, and the Gates belt. What this means is basically it's getting rid of all the components that are usually exposed to weather and the conditions of uh, your ride, the surface, the amount of dust, etc. And it seals it away inside an elegant little box sitting at the center of your bicycle. So the way that Pinion has done this is a whole story of its own. Uh, you can watch the factory tour on my channel to see uh, a bit of how they put this thing together. But it offers you 12 gears at a 600% range, which basically means you're going to be able to climb steeper gradients and still maintain speed on the downhill uh, than, say, with a 2x11 group set. The belt, on the other hand, takes away the problems that a chain might give you, such as corrosion or, you know, noise. Also, there's no more cassette and there's no derailleur that can get out of line, uh, that can get broken if you fall and hit a rock or something like that. And instead, it's just one little loop that has to be maintained 
from time to time with a toothbrush and some water. And the pinion gearbox requires an oil change every 10,000 kilometers or every year. If the belt needs a bit of stretching, Two Terrain has provided this wonderful bracket on the outback frame, which allows you to essentially tilt the pinion gearbox forward a little bit, stretching the belt so that you can get more life out of it. And so in general, the system has been uh, fantastic. I recommend that if you're interested in it to look around YouTube for a little bit, get some more videos, um, maybe some more of the technical talk in order to get convinced. Ellie Denham has a, a good view of videos on this. But other than that, I'm very happy with it and I don't think I'm gonna be able to go back to derailleurs. And moving on to the rear end of the bike, I wanna discuss three things. The panniers, the rack, and the saddle. Starting with the rack, in the one year Outback review, I was sporting the Logo Classic rack from Tubas, which is made of steel and had a little bit of rust built up over the years. That's only a visual thing, but ever since I've been given the opportunity to test the titanium lineup of Tubas, which is something they started doing recently. And this is the Liviano 28 inch uh, rack, which curiously fits on a 29 inch setup. So <laughs> maybe that's Outback specific, but it works. The titanium is uh, rustless and of course it's extremely light. So that's a, a great benefit for uh, any part of the bicycle. And it carries my trusty tripod as well as my panniers. They've been updated. They're the Ortlieb uh, Dark Sand bike picking lineup. This colorway fits in very nicely with uh, the Spanish uh, uh, landscape. And it has these new clips. They're slightly higher so you can stuff your bags a little more as well as this nice little detail to stow away that um, cord to get your panniers on and off the rack. Uh, the saddle, a very personal subject, I think, has been, uh, has been great for me too from the start. I also uh, talked about this in the one year review. It's still going strong. I'm still not wearing padded pants. It has a, a carved middle like center here, which gives you some flexibility in uh, your private parts. And it's been great for me. Again, it's a personal subject. Uh, the Cambium line I choose because I'm a little anti-leather. So this is a, a natural rubber and it's very comfortable for me. I can cycle many kilometers on it. If you want to get um, more thoughts on, on saddles, I recommend you look around on YouTube a little bit and see uh, for tips. But I can recommend the Brook C17 very much. And lastly, on the front end, I want to discuss the handlebar. These uh, Ergon grips, my Peak Design out front bike mount for the phone and the new light that I've added to this setup. So the handlebar, it's very swoopy, quite wide. You have to like that. Uh, the bike gets specced with this from the get-go and I've had a really good time with it because it gives you a lot of stability on uh, trails with a lot of loose rocks and, you know, single track, that sort of thing. So Belen has had it shortened a little bit. She shortened it by one centimeter to be able to have her arms slightly more uh, towards each other. But for me, the wide handlebar has been great. The thing that has still suffered uh, the most, I think, on the handlebar has been these mounts. So the, the, the bar ends, uh, these are just rubber from Ergon that the bike comes with. I would recommend maybe going with a metal side uh, so that you can lean it on rocks and trees and not have this, but it's only visual. Other than that, no parts have really aged very much on uh, the bike ever since the, the one year review. And an addition is this, uh, this kit here, which is the Peak Design out front bike mount, which allows me to put this phone together with a everyday case, together with some magnets, as well as clips onto the front of my handlebar just like that, vertical or horizontally, to have uh, at a glance information on my route planner and to have my phone close for camera shots for, um, for social media. Um, if you wanna listen to podcasts, take photos, uh, have your phone ready for videos or something like that, I can really recommend this mount. It's fantastic for quick access. And it also allows you to mount accessories underneath. So if you have, for example, uh, an action camera or a light like me, then you can mount it underneath with a GoPro-like mount and uh, yeah, have it uh, set right up front above your handlebar. In my case, I've specced it with a Supernova 
uh, Pro B54 battery powered light. That was an addition uh, after the Silk Road mountain race. And I'm very happy with it, even though I don't do a lot of night riding, because if I do, if at the end of a long bikepacking day, for some reason it gets dark, we haven't found a camp spot, I now have a huge load of light uh, spread out in front of me and a battery that powers that for about 24 hours. On the lower light mode, this battery is good for uh, yeah about a full day of charge. The battery does charge with quite a big charging brick, which I'm not a big fan of. I've urged Supernova to uh, get on with USB-C for charging this uh, battery pack and they're working on that. But because of the 24 hour charge uh, capability to this light, you don't really need to carry that charging brick with you unless you're gonna ride in the night all the time. And that I think is pretty much the front end, rear end, the center pinion, and belt uh, drivetrain, as well as the front end, fork, wheels, tires, rack, saddle, everything explained. If I missed anything, or if you see anything on the bike that you would like more information about, please drop a, a note in the comments and we can talk further about it there. Otherwise, there's plenty of bikepacking content around and um, I hope to inspire you with that or to make you learn something new. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.